Hi, and welcome to your 26th iOS programming tutorial. And in this two-part two tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to create a basic table view and detail view controller to go along with that. So a table view is essentially a list of items that are displayed in a table style format, and we'll use a UI table view controller to display these. There'll be a header bar at the top which will come from a UI navigation controller which the table view will be embedded in, and we'll style the UI table view and customize it slightly. From there we'll add a detail view controller, and we'll do this in part 2. But we'll add a detail view controller that will display additional information when a cell is tapped on, and a cell is essentially an item in the table view. You'll get a better understanding of what I'm talking about as we go along. So let's get started. Open up Xcode and create a new Xcode project. We'll just create a single view application, and I'm just going to call mine Table View App. You can call yours whatever you want. I'm also just going to use iPhone, but once again, that's entirely up to you. And then create your project, and let's first go to the storyboard to set up our Table View. So, the first thing we need to do is delete this existing view controller, as we won't be using it. There's two ways to approach setting up a table view, and we'll use the simpler way. That is to find a UI navigation item in the object's inspector, and it's essentially a circle with an arrow pointing to the left. If you click on it and wait a second, you'll see that it's a UI navigation controller. So click on that and drag it out onto the screen. You'll see that there's a blank view controller that says navigation controller, and a root view controller that has something that says prototype cells, and then what is, in fact, a table view cell. So let me explain this all a bit. We're embedding this in a navigation controller, and a navigation controller essentially allows us to add a heading or an, um, a navigation bar to the top of our UI table view controller, and that's the easiest way to do it. And then, we haven't actually looked into UI navigation controllers much throughout these tutorials, but essentially it's an easier way of um, presenting view controllers using segways, and things like when you connect a view to another view using a segway, you'll notice that normally you get the option of modal, push, and custom. And you'd usually select modal. With the UI navigation controller, you can select push. And essentially what that will do is let's add another view controller to the screen now, and then I add a segue. Let's see if I can add a segue. I'll add a button quickly to here. And let's say I add a segue and I choose push. And then suddenly we see a navigation bar has appeared on the new view controller. And if I were to run this in the simulator, back button would appear. And all the swipe to go back gestures in iOS 7 would also be automatically added. The advantage of using the UI navigation controller in a table view application other than the fact that you then get a navigation bar, is that when you're presenting the detail view controller, it's a lot easier. So let's start talking about the actual UI table view controller. So this is a UI table view controller and then embedded in a UI navigation bar. So the first thing I'm going to do is double click on this title and change it to my table view. Then we've got what says prototype cells, and that's a heading for a UI table view section. We don't need to worry about that, that won't actually appear if we run the application. So let's actually do that now and see if it works. Before we do that, click on your navigation controller and make sure that if you've only got these two views as I do in this application, that it has been selected automatically to be is initial view controller. If not, select that. Now let's run the application and see what happens. One great thing about table views is that you can add as much data as you want, and the table view is dynamically going to add rows for you. You don't need to worry about creating those in code, or at least not creating the frames and creating the objects for them. As you can see, there's our table view. It looks quite similar to in the storyboard without prototype cells. That's because we only have one section in this table view. And if we have multiple sections, let's say we wanted to do American states, and we wanted to do them by letter, we might have, instead of prototype cells, we might say A, and then have all the A states, and then B, and so on. To populate this table view, we need to do that in code. And so we'll create an array, and then we'll set this first cell, we'll set the text to be the first object in the array, second cell to be the second object in the array, and so on, until we get to the end of the array. So let's start doing that. The first thing we want to do is actually set up our table view. There's a few types of cell styles that we can set. We could have a custom cell, 
basic, which just has one text, or what I like is subtitle, which allows you to do a title and a subtitle. If you click on the cell and then you drag on the white square, you can resize your cell to whatever size you want. Let's run the application now and you'll see it looks a bit different because the cells are slightly bigger. Let's also see where the subtitle and title, now that they are set in the storyboard, appear. As you can see, they still don't, so we still need to set them. We can also add other things like accessories, so if I click on that and I could select Detail Disclosure or Disclosure Indicator. That's what I'm going to do for now. And I'm also going to change the selection to grey. So when the user taps on the cell, it's going to the cell will highlight in grey rather than blue. Although blue isn't supported in iOS 7, it is still supported in iOS 6. So you want to remember to do that. There's nothing else that we need to change here except the identifier, and I'll explain that in a moment. For now, just type cell with a capital C. Now we can actually go and click on viewcontroller.h, and then holding down the command key, click on viewcontroller.m. Then click the delete key on your keyboard and select move to trash. Now hit command N and select objective C class. Change it to a subclass of UI table view controller, not UI table view, UI table view controller, and let's change the name to table view controller. Then click next and click create. Now I'm just going to drag those above the storyboard. And now I'll click command B to build, and then let's go back to our storyboard and set the class for this view controller. So click on the black box at the bottom of the view controller, then select the newspaper icon. So select the newspaper icon and then inside class, Let's type table view controller, which is the view controller we just created. That means that when we run the application, whatever code we put inside table view controller.h and .m will be reflected in this table view controller in our storyboard. Now let's go into table view controller.m. We'll start there. Actually, let's go into h just because it's worth learning how to do this. So in between add interface and add end, type add property uh, non atomic retain. NS array, and let's just call this objects array. Now that's going to hold all of the. Uh, actually, we need two. We need to change this to be title objects array, and then copy this line and paste it, and then change this to be subtitle, because we're doing a subtitle to a style of view. So what we will have is we'll have title objects array. So let's say there was just one item in the array, and array is essentially a list of objects, in this case text, so NS strings. So let's say we were going to do Apple products and the date of their release. So in title objects I might have iPhone 5S and in subtitle the first object might be 2013 and then would set the cell to be 2013 and iPhone 5S. You'll see what I mean in a moment and I'll explain all the code at the end. Now delete these comments in view to load and let's just quickly set up a few things. Delete these hashtag warnings and that will get rid of the warnings. Now, in number of sections, select 1, and for number of rows, select square bracket self dot uh, title objects array count. I'll explain all of this later. Now, for now, we can also delete all these comments down the bottom. Let's start in view to load and start adding some objects. So, type self dot uh, title objects array equals at square bracket and then press enter so type ahead will fill it in for you and then inside objects type at talking mark talking mark comma at talking mark talking mark comma and then before that second at talking mark talking mark press enter just to clean it all up a bit then copy that and paste that let's say five or six times then copy all of that code there and paste it into, uh, except change self.title objects array to self.subtitle objects array. Now let's also now start entering some objects. I'll explain, as I said, this in a moment. So for title objects, let's do iPhone 5S, iPhone 5C, iPhone 5, iPhone 4S, iPhone 4 and iPhone 3GS. Now inside subtitle, let's do 2013, 2013, 
And you can put any data you want here. This is just an example where I'm doing a list of iPhones and their release date. And then when we do part two, uh, I will, when you click on a cell, you'll see an image or you might see some more information about the specific device. And then 2012, the iPhone 5 came out. The iPhone 4 presumably came out for us in 2011. 4 came out in 2010. And 3GS came out in 2009, I believe. If I've got any of those wrong, don't worry. The dates, I mean. So, let's now go into cell for row at index path, and that's really important. Make sure all of the code that you see on my computer is exactly the same on yours. You might be watching this tutorial in a few months' time when iOS 8 has been released, and it might all look a bit different. But make sure it looks exactly like that, so I'll give you a moment to type that if it doesn't already look the same. Also, make sure cell identifier is set to cell, as we set in our storyboard. Under the comment configure the cell, let's start adding some code to set up the table view cell. Type cell dot title uh, dot well let's start with text label dot text equals square brackets self dot title objects array object at index index path dot row now type cell dot detail text label dot text equals self dot uh, self dot subtitle objects array object at index index path dot row now let's try running our application and see if it works. Hopefully what we will see is a table view populated with this data. As you can see, we do. So we've got iPhone 5S 2013. So we set our subtitle from subtitle objects array. So it's going, let me explain the code now that we've done that. So the first thing we're doing is creating an array or a list of objects. The first one is the title objects. And that is the, uh, the those are the objects we're going to set in our title label inside our table view cell. So as you can see, iPhone 5S, iPhone 5S, iPhone 5C, iPhone 5C, and iPhone 3GS at the bottom, iPhone 3GS is at the bottom. Then we're setting up subtitles. So we're going, I, so the first object is iPhone 5S, that's the first title label, and the first subtitle label is 2013, and as you can see, that is true. You'll see when we click on our cell, we get that grey selection colour, as we said, and we see our detail indicator, as well as our title. You can also see that it's transparent as table view uh, navigation bars are in iOS 7. So you can sort of just see that through. You can see it says iPhone 5S behind the nav bar. So that's the table view set up. So essentially we've got this array of all the objects and then we need to actually set the object in the table view. So the first thing we're doing is saying how many sections are there in the table view. So number of sections in table view. And that's called automatically. So when the view opens, so when our application opens, it's going, how many sections should there be in the table view in just the one section? As I said, if there's more than one section, there'll be a heading for each section. We only need one. And then we're saying how many rows. So this is a row, this is a row, this is a row, and so on. So we can see that there are six rows. And so how do we get the number six? We could write return six, and then there'd be six rows. But what if we added another object to our title objects array? Well then, we might either have an app that crashes, or we just won't have the last object in the array. So instead of what we're doing is we're going, let's have a look at our title objects array, and let's see how many objects there are in that. So self.title objects array count, which is the number of objects in title array. So if we got rid of iPhone 3GS, there'd be five objects in the array, and hence there'd only be five rows in our table view. Finally, we're going self a row at index path, and essentially that is called every time we create a new row. So we're creating a new row six times. So it's going, I th don't know which order it does, and I think it goes backwards. So I think it will go, uh, actually, no, it won't, it will go the other way, sorry. So it's going to go self a row at index path one, or zero, actually, because it starts at zero. So this is zero, this is one, this is two, three, four, and five, because it's in a, a type of array, essentially. So it's going self a row at index path zero. What should we make? Uh, what, what should the, the cells title text be, and what should the cell's subtitle text be for the zeroth cell, or the first cell. So we're saying cell.text label, which is the title text, dot text, like any other label, text label dot text, equals our objects, our title objects array, object at index, index path dot row. So index path dot row is the row. So if we're looking at the first row, then we're going Let's have a look in our title objects array, what is the first object, iPhone 5S. So make the cell's text label for that particular cell, iPhone 5S. 
and then we're doing the same for detail text label, except we're going look to self dot subtitle objects array. So let's get, and then again it's index path dot row, and then it's returning the self. So then iPhone five Z would be displayed. And I'm actually going to put in a breakpoint here to show you exactly what's happening if I run the application again. So as you can see, we've got a breakpoint here. So let's see if anything's displayed in our simulator yet. Nothing yet. So we'll create another one. And you actually can't see anything, but if you were to log it, you will see that it's going through, and it will go through five times here. So that's second time, third, fourth, fifth. And, oh, sorry, the first time wasn't one. And now, we, oh, no, right, yeah, so we have six. So it's gone through six times, run through this six times. First time, index path dot row is zero for the first row. Second time, it's one for the second row. And so on until it gets to five, which is the sixth row and the final row. Because we have set the number of rows to be the number of objects in our array. So that's essentially how to create a basic table view. And in part two of this tutorial, we're going to look at, actually, when the user clicks on, a row we're going to actually display some information, uh, some data for the for, for the cell. So we'll click on it and then we'll take them to a view controller and the view controller might display an image, it might display something like that. So if you have any questions about this tutorial or any questions about table views generally that you want to know about what we've learned today, feel free to comment on this video, message us directly through YouTube, visit our website 99centsappdevelopment.com and uh, contact us through that, or message us on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash 99 cents app development. Be sure to like and subscribe, and we'll see you in part 4, part 2 of this tutorial. <laughs>